welcome it because I think one of the big strategic shifts that we've made recently is going from thinking that everything has to be about driving traffic and driving our community to certainly not pushing that by the wayside, but understanding the distribution of our content and distribution of our community is actually equally important. So social media and widgets and you know brands fit into that. Um, and all the tools that we're using now to, to create an opportunity for our users to embrace our services, our content, you know, our community, to live outside of our own four walls is actually really important. So where, you know, Paula, two years ago, we'd be talking a lot to ourselves, often and frequently, you know, the opportunity with a brand, for example, who also looks at themselves as a publisher, is to actually talk to a new audience and bring them in, you know, as part of an external open source, you know, traffic generation opportunity. Eric, I see you chop that. Well, I, I think we're at Smart Brief, we're anomalous because um, we're, at, we're an aggregator and a filter. So the more content that's out there, the more relevant our services, because that's what we do, is we pull out you know, the best of the best. So, um, so you, know, you steal Tony's content and then make money off of it as an aggregator? Is that how this works? That's not how this works. <laughs> 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 Tony, what do you, what, what, what's your opinion on I mean, that? See, that's interesting. is going around talking about the non-branded web as being a cesspool, not because he thinks that's a clever thing to say. It's because that 40% of the above-the-fold search results in the average Google search result in user-driven content. Google News, 50% of the users of Google News don't actually read the stories, they just quickly scan it. They don't actually click through, nothing happens. So what you terrifies... You get no money off that, right? That's, that's scary. What, what terrifies Google is, at the end of the day, over time, out of a long run, you're going to stop using search that doesn't take you to something that really matters to you. And so there's an argument to be said that <laughs> this will be either a great opportunity for aggregators who will branded their aggregation or a problem for aggregators. I, I'm not offering an opinion one way or the other, but I think it's a really interesting <laughs> topic of discussion. I, I think it's a fair thing to say that brand and particularly trusted brand and content, that granted we're in a very in-depth B2B marketplace where people are literally betting their careers over the city. So the markets I operate are very different than some of the other markets representatives, so I want to differentiate that. But I will tell you that these are not people that are, <clears throat> that are casual about their content, and they trust it, they pay for it. 35% of tech web's revenues come from paid content. So they take the, the content very seriously. So I think as aggregation plays out, I think it's a fascinating model. I don't know how much it scales. You know, frankly, I don't know where it goes ultimately. I think it works in some cases, but I, I'm curious as to where that's ultimately going to play out on the web. So you're skeptical of smart brief, then? Not, not a smart brief. I'm, I'm just skeptical. skeptical. I'm trying to cause a little controversy. <laughs> well, I think that there's a, I mean, Tony's hitting a really good point, which is every major publisher, you know, yes, they thank Google for the traffic, but the economic power is actually sitting with, right, with Google. They thank Google um, for the curse of the Yeah, of course they do. Um, but the, there is a bigger trend, which you know, you're hinting at, which is it used to be that users found content. Go to Google and you look, you know, Bing maybe, um, and you, you would find, you turn, so, uh, type in whatever it was you're looking for, you find the content. In the social world, <coughs> content finds users. Yeah. And I think that is a tremendous opportunity for publishers, that's why we're very, very bullish, because um, in the social world, it's about, you know, it's, it's about the social stream and it's what's going through the social graph, whether it's my professional or personal graph. A um, great example of how this is working is something to post, <coughs> traffic is. Soaring past WashingtonPost.com, you know, which is an established print brand and an online brand, primarily because they opened up to Facebook Connect and it's fully integrated into the system. And so if you log in, I'm you not sure how they can post traffic those related traffic. They're getting like a third now. Of their really? Traffic. That's the one million, one million <laughs> comments um, are coming from there. Um, but if you're a publisher and you create content, then I think that's a tremendous opportunity to go from you know, gaming the system. To just create great content that people are passionate about. If they're passionate about it, they will share it for you. And there's all the work, it will fly across the web as this concept of past links. Um, and then hopefully those people will say, hey, you know, Tony just read that, I'm in his social graph, great, I'm going to put it and I'll arrive at the, at the, uh, you know, the, the originator of the content. Okay, so play, play it out. I mean, I think it's interesting. Play it out. You could make the argument, I'm not, but you could make the argument that you spice it up a little bit. <laughs> 
So you can't, you can't tweet this now, so you're not really making the art. Having, <laughs> having Google as, or any major search provider as the dominant destination on the web is the equivalent of QVC being the leading television program on television. It doesn't make sense. Think about it. Play it out. Run where the map is going to go. I'm not suggesting search is going to go away. Search is huge, but we have such search myopathy. At the end of the day, right, you know, people are looking for content that matters, whether that content is a visual narrative, an audio narrative, or, or educational nature, or pure entertainment. And I, I think you're, you're going to see a balancing act between destinations that are facilities that allow you to find things. And, and I really agree with Matthew. I think one of the things that people really want to know is, hey, where do you read? Where do you come? Right, that's where the social media, if you forget, this was the original social media, what we're doing right now, live media. And I think that fusion that's coming through things like Facebook are starting to teach us about the web in a very different way than traditional search does. Yeah, and it's interesting because one of the reasons I always like this panel is because these guys are on like the cutting edge. They are doing things, have to figure out things because your whole revenue model depends on it. And exploring things like I'm going to post in Facebook Connect, which I stood corrected on, uh, great lessons for us in terms of sharing. So. I spent a lot of time asking the questions and back and forth, so I promised I'd turn it back to you guys. So let's ask some questions here. Yes. So question. Yeah. Right. So is that from a more business to business perspective? Pay performance and cost per lead type of things and those deals. So pay performance, cost per lead, you guys do it and how, how yeah, well so we are on a lead basis, I mean we are a huge lead of an our categories and rules. I mean we I mean we're doing um, well over uh, six figures in actual leads every month. Just in leads, the, I mean, yeah, that's the times involved with $100 or $150 per lead, depending on what we're doing. And so, is it effective for your clients in terms of what they're wanting? What they coming back? They keep coming back, yeah. Um, <laughs> so the pay for it's got to be Yeah, I mean, I, you know, our category, the leads are anywhere from 55 to a couple of hundred bucks, depending on you know, the filters and whether it's a CIO and that kind of thing. And it's fair to say that um, you know, the, we can almost not be the demand for leads. Yeah. On the CPC side, which is I think maybe the question on um, you know, getting paid for sales, that is definitely something that, that we will do, um, that we experiment with on the, on the fringes, to be honest. Uh, part of the problem lies in the fact that vendors are not overly good at tracking it, um, and they're not actually very transparent in being able to report back to us what was sold off of the actions that we did. So, yeah, we do it on the fringes. It's not the main business. The main performance-based business is leads. That's a very, very big business. And then we hand those leads. Uh, we scrub them sometimes and we hand them off. That we have to do any CPO or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, we, I'd say we have a rather small CPO program. Um, that said, if you think about just specifically as a channel, like you think about webinars and webcasts, what the advertisers are paying for there and the sponsors of those educational opportunities that are being offered, they're paying for leads. So if you, were to, if you were to include that business in the CPL, in the CPL category, which is usually how it's sold, um, it's actually it's much larger. And it's actually the fastest growing category we have. So um, why it's a bit more than a rounding error on all of Total numbers. It's, uh, <laughs> it's growing rather quickly, and uh, you know, I think all businesses. If that is the future, and if advertising is dead, which I don't agree, but you know, it's possible. Um, I, uh, it just scares you, right? <laughs> I thought. Well, I mean, as the advertising numbers growing, but um, it may not be as effective as it was. But the uh, the uh, if that is the case, and CPL is the forward, it's just much. I do believe it's a much smaller revenue opportunity for publishers, and publishers will, will have to make changes. Okay. Tell me, you see, you see, you 